Yo guys, what's up? It's Warspirit, and today I want to bring you guys a full gameplay commentary from the Crisis 3 open beta. This is Airport, and we're playing Crash Site here. As you can see, I have equipped my Feline Laser, my favourite class from Crisis 2, and I'm actually really enjoying the feeling of Crisis 3 as well. Obviously it doesn't quite compare to the shotgun of the Crisis 3 open beta, that is by far the strongest weapon in my opinion that's currently in the game, and if you're looking to level up quickly, then yeah, definitely use the shotgun, but uh, I love the feline and uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoy the gameplay that you see here and I might encourage you to try it if you haven't actually tried it yet. So in this video I kind of want to give you guys a few tips and tactics for playing Crisis 3. I have played quite a few hours now so I know what works and what sort of doesn't work and I know a few good efficient ways to take out enemies. As you know, uh, there's a lot of new players in the game and the default classes are all equipped with this suit module or perk called Auto Armor. Now what Auto Armor does is it automatically activates armor mode when you take damage. What this means in open beta is you might feel your weapons aren't doing as much damage as they should be. Well, technically they are, it's just all these people are getting armor mode automatically activated for them. And when you activate armor mode, uh, you can take a lot more bullets than when you're in sprint or power mode. And obviously when you're in stealth mode, you take a lot more damage than the other two modes together. And actually, when you decide to start playing without auto armor, you may discover that by not using armor mode, you can get punched and killed with one hit and the bow will also one hit you uh, when you do not use auto armor so keep that in mind and make sure you use armor mode when you feel you're at a risk of dying. I do highly recommend that you do customize your own class without auto armor you do get an extra suit module and some of those suit modules in there are pretty powerful uh, my favorite suit modules so far have been m maneuverability which gives you a really sweet speed increase and ledge grab speed increase um, and no falling damage, sort of like air stomp level 2 in Crisis 2. Um, and my other favourite perk is Scout, and basically what Scout does is when you've got a max radar, you can see the directions that enemies are facing, and also on level 3 you can see the health bars of enemies that you shoot at, which is incredibly useful in, the, in uh, judging how many more bullets you need to finish off a guy, or like whether it's worth engaging a particular fight uh, if you think you can win it or not depending on the guy's health uh, so that's really cool and you can see the health bars popping up in this gameplay but back to talking about auto armor and how to counter it well in this gameplay I'm using EMP grenades and I think EMP grenades are awesome um, that is a really good decision from Crytek to add EMP grenades to the multiplayer and they are incredibly useful for countering auto armor basically if you see a crash site and obviously most of the game modes you play here will be crash site, you don't have to worry about auto armor in hunter mode. Um, so playing crash site is incredibly useful to have EMP grenades equipped. If an enemy team has the crash site, basically all you have to do is drop an EMP grenade on this crash site and this will automatically disable all their uh, auto armor abilities. They won't be able to activate armor mode and they won't be able to activate stealth mode, um, depending like how, how long they stay inside the EMP grenade radius, but it is incredibly useful. Um, you also see here that I got the EMP killstreak, which uh, sort of does the same th effects as EMP but covers the entire map and will just wipe out all the energy of the enemies and also this negates the effects of auto armor, resulting in enemies dying a lot faster. Enemies will go down incredibly fast when they do not have auto armor activated. So EMP grenades are key to gameplay in my opinion, especially for this style of gameplay, like rushing around here. Uh, using the feline and the scarab with laser sight. You may have noticed earlier on that I had to pick up a scarab when I ran out of feline ammo and then um, I opened up the weapon menu and was able to customize the scarab to my liking. So if you pick up a weapon from the ground you can just open up your weapon customization menu and customize it to whatever you want it to be to suit your own preferences rather than have it the same as what the last guy had it set to. So that's really cool and I'm glad that is also in the multiplayer. So let's talk a little bit about map tactics for airport. Uh, it is quite a wide open map. There are lots of small corridors as well though. Um, I like, I prefer to stick to the small corridors, especially when I'm using the feline. Uh, I'm not going to run out into the open area uh, down where like the pinger path is. It seems like a lot of maps in Crisis 3 are going to have these open areas where the pinger can walk around on. And uh, you'll notice in this match actually I don't have any engagements with the pinger. I generally try to avoid having to deal with the pinger as much as possible. Um, 
One thing you do have to watch out for right now is shotgunners in the open beta. The shotgun is really powerful as I said in a previous video and if you do want to level up pretty quickly I suggest you use the shotgun and then obviously once you've done that you can start customizing your classes to your own preference but uh, yeah use the shotgun default class guys it's really powerful. I'm not going to lie to you and say oh don't use this guys it's kind of it's kind of cheesy to use something that's so overpowered but yeah if you want to level up use it. <laughs> shotgunner just killed me there. Asshole! Uh, so to deal with shotgunners on airport well, armor mode actually isn't too effective against shotgunners. Shotgunners can still one-shot kill you when you're in full armor mode with no energy lost. Uh, damn, FY71 just got me here. Sorry guys, death streak going on in the video. It's okay though, we do we do end up with quite a good KD by the end of it, but shotgunners! Um, what you want to do is, yeah, use armor mode because once you get a certain distance away from them, their shotgun won't do too much damage, although it does seem the shotguns do have quite a long range sometimes when you're playing the open beta. Um, but get away from them, and you want to like just try and jump, there's loads of different levels of gameplay in these new maps, these are sort of vertical styled gameplay, and you want to like jump up to a ledge grab, get over there, uh, there I just got hit by an EMP kill streak there, and as you saw all my energy drains for like a few seconds at last, and as you can see my energy has already recharged, it distorts your minimap as well for a certain time, and yeah, it's a really cool kill streak, really nice kill streak, I think I really like it. Hopefully you might have already picked up a few tips and tricks here just by watching the video and seeing how I play. Uh, swarmers are pretty hard to avoid. The only thing really that you can do when uh, you do get the warning message of oh, enemy has a swarmer or something like that. So just get undercover a little bit obviously. I did not hear the warning there. I don't even know if there was one but I didn't hear it and that guy beasted me with the swarmer. Uh, there's lots of cool little Parker. What the fuck is this kind of situation I just got into man? I jumped in there and there's like four guys. What I should have done like as soon as I saw that I was like, shit. Um, but what I should have done is thrown an EMP grenade down there. Uh, this is a max suit and here's a good way to avoid max suits. I haven't managed to stealth kill a max suit yet in the open beta, but it's uh, something I want to try and do. But you saw there to get out of that sticky situation where that max suit probably would have killed me. I just uh, jumped up into the sky, used stealth, confused him a little bit and killed him off. I haven't actually been using stealth very much in the open beta. This gameplay here is probably the the only gameplay where, uh, well this is probably the gameplay where that I've actually used stealth the most out of all the games I've played so far. Uh, I wanted to kind of give it a shot with my sort of feline crisis 2 laser setup and it, it seemed to actually work out alright. I have a little bit of some issues with stealth right now. I feel like um, it must be like the transition time or something is uh, really long because I feel like I can see enemies in stealth incredibly easy like they'll activate stealth and it's it's really easy to follow where they go they're they glow bright red or something and then other times you'll see uh, i think there's a point later on in this video or this might be it <laughs> this is it right here actually i did not see that guy that guy was pretty fucking invisible i don't know whether it's to do with uh, if you stand still like you're more invisible or something I, it must be because obviously you don't see the flicker of like the the lights and stuff but uh, i go back down here and hunt down this guy again with some nanovision and make sure I get this guy He's sort of round about the same spot. That's not him, he was just a, an unlucky guy on the crash site. But here's this guy He's camping around here in stealth and I get him again. So that's good. Nanovision is still in Crisis 3 and you don't need to uh, have your visor open to activate it like what you did in the alpha. So they changed that back to what it was like in Crisis 2. And also you've got your separate Nanovision energy bar as well. Uh, I still would prefer a single energy bar for everything to be honest guys. Uh, as much fun as it is running around with Infinity Sprint and stuff, I do miss the sort of energy management that was in Crisis 2. But I guess it's uh, just moving forward. <laughs> it's not even like a, it's not a Nanosuit 3.0, it's still the Nanosuit 2.0, it's just like, I don't know, they're, they just look different for the multiplayer so I don't know what's the deal with that, how they managed to fit in the, the logic that all these like the way this suit works is totally different, but whatever, it's cool. I kind of brushed over one of the suit modules that I'm using early in the video called Maneuverability. I kind of want to talk about that suit module a little bit more. A lot of people in the forums are not too sure about it yet. They think it might be a little bit overpowered. Uh, it is incredibly useful. We just don't know what the other suit modules in Crisis 3 are going to be. There's a limited amount of suit modules in the open beta, so there's also obviously still the chance that there's going to be a lot of other really cool suit modules out there. But what Maneuverability does is it does increase your movement speed now. First of all, uh, I thought that increased movement speed was available only in Hunter mode, like it was a special maximum speed perk or something, but it turns out maneuverability also increases your movement speed. 
Um, now, I can't see any situation where increased movement speed is not incredibly valuable. It allows you to catch up to enemies you're chasing, it allows you to run away from enemies that are hunting you down, it allows you, allows you to run away from shotgunners, obviously most shotgunners are going to be using maneuverability as well, um, but I say uh, if you're playing right now use maneuverability, it's incredibly useful and you can easily hunt down enemies, chase them and destroy them with that perk. But that's the end of the round guys, <sighs> check out that awesome score, not bad eh? not bad. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the gameplay guys and I hope you learned a few things from watching the video. I hope you enjoyed my commentary and I hope you subscribe for more gameplays that are coming soon. I plan to do loads of videos with lots of as many tips and tricks as I can give you guys about Crisis 3. If you need any help with anything just leave a comment and I'll, I'll reply to a lot of comments. I do reply to comments. I read all my comments that I get on my videos. And yeah, thanks for watching guys. You'll see here this is just like the little award screen. It does take a little while to get past the match highlights and stuff. There's no skip button yet for that. I wish there was a skip button for match highlights. I would like some more time in the lobby to have time to customize my equipment. Sometimes I feel like just after a round finishes, I want to leave the server just to spend time customizing my equipment and then jump straight back into another server. Obviously, this causes some problems with starting a game mid-round and so on. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in another video very soon.